In part 1 we learned how to manage when events can appear. With those in mind, let's look at the variety of gameplay events. Anything could be considered a quest. Having quest and activity labels help to separate highly authored content from reoccurring content. Quests are the tent poles to a game finishing one gives players the feeling they are closer to a story's finale. They usually involve one more game players, objectives, story threads, and possibly cutscenes. When a player chooses to start a quest, all other available quests and some game events are disabled. When a player fails to complete a quest, it can usually be restarted. Quest types this scripted series of encounters come in a variety of flavors. Campaign quests, these are critical to finishing the main story and game, sometimes called the golden path. Side quests related to the main story, these are optional and not required to complete the campaign. Access to them may be conditional to other events. Sequel or follow-up quests are a flavor of this. Agenda quest optional stories, unrelated to the main story, usually featuring a regional contact, a quest giver. This should not be confused with DLC. Consider DLC chapters, their own campaign arc. Found quest a single narrative discovered, without a quest giver, like finding a map leading to treasure. Content production is usually lighter, relying more on text, pictures and state tracking instead of new characters, dialogue, or cutscene animations, quest arc, a series of quests related to a long-term objective, activities are smaller for more specific game experiences, not typically as grand or finite as a quest, they attract players with a change of pace and more consistent rewards, good activities spotlight a gameplay feature, Finishing an activity increases resources, but does not at all the feeling of finishing the main storyline. All of them should influence, a bit influenced by the player's story, providing fictional relevance. As a general rule, an activity is a lot for ongoing access. Through an introduction quest, this one-time introduction may be a prerequisite for unlocking the next critical quest. Activity types, like quests, these have several types to consider. Challenge these repeatable scenarios involve single goals to gain a single reward, a chance to exercise a game feature or mechanic. They have explicit locations to start them. Examples include shooting ranges, gambling, and time trials. Some of these appear on the to-do map once unlocked. Like a chop shop, far cut after requests, others appear systemically. Depending on the world state, it can roam in pinkly mode far quite theft. Permanently a view like leaf a specific requirement is not depleted or filled. Opportunity opportunities are like small quests that replenish over time. Conditional in nature. This appears systemically based on the world state. If the player fails to complete the objective, it does not automatically become available again. The player needs to discover a new instance of it in the game world. These opportunities can unlock other events related to its story and the eventual goal, but they are not to be considered a larger quest. An example of this would be encountering bounty hunters with the captive from Red Dead Redemption to you can choose to free the captive, or take the captive in for the bounty, if something involves checkpoints or multiple objectives. Consider it a quest, push if players are ignoring quests, activities, or simply do not interact with the world. A push event, will pop nearby to grab their attention, and luring them back into the game loop. For example, a game ambushes the player, a priest shares a donation, a saving a friend, or the boss appears and reveals information about the next quest, naturally a conditional event, a push event, should never directly engage players, if they are standing idle, or using the game menu, point based, 
Some types are not marked on a map, or even an explicit encounter. Some activities are changes in stats, or how players use game currency. Investment investments satisfy long-term motivation for players with an item, or upgrade in the game. For example, modifying an ability in a vehicle, buying a safe house, clothes, or better weapons. Tally how players impact the world can be looked at as a series of statistics. These raw numbers can be used to create more gameplay rewards to unlock more content. For example, knock out 10 cars, steal 10 armored cars, or purchase 5 businesses. Quick in this change small values on a player, it can satisfy the immediate macro compulsion loops, do something to get something. For example, Looting an NAPI or drinking a health potion. Activity arc. Activity results can influence future activities. Most point based activities pay off throughout the game. For example, 10 headshots unlock the next gun expert perk. A simple script managing variables in activities can be influenced by external data, like player statistics. A common use of this involves spawn count. A type of enemy, it can also trigger additional scripts to create rewards for completing a series of related activities. For example, players could hijack on the supply trucks anytime they are available. After the third successful event, those trucks now feature two armed drivers, making it more difficult to hijack them. After the fifth successful event, the job of destination is surrounded by enemy team members. After the ninth successful event, players are rewarded with the trucking business and now collects money from truck shipments. In this example, the weapon truck opportunity would be removed from the game director queue. At that specific area, they might appear in another town or neighborhood. It might unlock a new series of hijack opportunities such as armored cars. Another example is hunting in the original Red Dead Redemption. If the player skins certain animals, his huntsman rank increases. Upon completing rank 10, he gains the ability to create a health kit. He can still hunt and gain the immediate reward afterwards. But there are no more meat challenges involving the hunting activity. Not every event needs to be grand and gilded. The vignette is an ambient event, which may or may not even involve gameplay. Players may see this as the world is alive while exploring. Some could lead to a quest or activity. This can be similar to a point changing quickie event. Those tend to be systemic though, only expressed by eye actions and relevant to changing some statistic. The vignette, on the other hand, has a narrative purpose, which may not even have a change in point values. When you understand what's attractive to players in the minute, hour, and day, it can help give clarity to a game event. Murky game design and objectives can be the downfall to an otherwise exceptional team effort. Car loop, the common gravy to any game. It exercising the primary game words through a series of encounters. Using action shooters as an example, their car loop can involve shooting, stealth, cover, and sometimes vehicles. Common objectives can be expressed with these categories. Need to loop. Spending more time simply in the game can provide you with bugs. If you only are slow but steady rise in rewards, are exploring all aspects of the game. For example, investment and tally events. Micro loop. If you are into impulsive, immediate game or loss, low impact in the larger picture, then embrace this motivation. For example, the quickie event for grabbing some bullets or cash in a dash. How many of these events mix in, match with others fall into a handful of categories. Permanent an event is always available after unlocked. Conditional an event appears based on rules and world states, like time of day, 
spotlight an event surpassing all others until dealt with. Instance, open world. Overlapping all these types gives you an idea how they relate to one another. Most of the quests and activities can be in isolated instances on the open world. Some are exclusively in the open world, like font casters and push activities. Vignettes can relate to just about anything except meta motivation loops. All of these events come at a cost, while some are more or less complex than others. They should all aspire to be high quality toy. No event should feel like a cheap checklist, like collecting items with no payoff. It can be simple while at the same time feel like it's part of a bigger experience.